all, this is Halloween, and if you love costumes and Halloween as much as I do, we're almost there. I'm going to be showing you how to make some awesome costumes without breaking the bank, maybe even using some items you already have at home. In today's episode, we will be recreating none other than Rosie the Riveter from the 1940s propaganda poster, We Can Do It. You've probably all seen this poster. Back in the 1940s, during World War II, a lot of the men were being drafted into the war. So it was women's position to take their places in the workforce. And we kind of held down the fort until they returned home, the ones that did. So this propaganda poster came out during that time. And it basically stood for women's strength. And still today is a major iconic poster that speaks to women's abilities and independence and we will be recreating that everybody loves rosie the riveter she's an instantly recognizable historic figure let's get started who doesn't love rosie the riveter for this costume i kind of did it a la carte i bought all these different pieces and put it together myself the boots i actually purchased for several other costumes this year and i also wore them to a concert. So I love the boots. I wear them often. It was not a waste of money. They were only like 34 bucks, but Rosie wears like a, almost like a jean or denim colored one piece factory sort of looking suit. So I went ahead and bought myself a mechanics suit that was kind of a denim blue. And I bought a, a metal lunch box. Now this is cool because it goes with Rosie, but you can also carry it as a purse with your costume. Um, I bought an instant Rosie kit. It came with an iron-on Rosie patch, a pin to put on the lapel or the collar of the jumpsuit, and then it also came with the iconic red polka dot bandana. And I'm choosing to wear this wig because she kind of has a finger-waved look going on. So I'm going to wear the wig with it. You don't have to. You can use your own hair. It's totally up to you. And I also, the last time I did this, I made a poster to put behind me that we can do it. It's an easy poster to recreate because it's basically just a thought bubble kind of that says we can do it. And the whole thing is yellow with the, the blue background and white writing. So it's, it's just a really easy thing to do if you want to add to your costume. I'm not going to do it this time. I already did it once and it was a couple years ago and I thought I just got to keep the ball rolling with these costumes. We'll just add in a background for the photos. And then I just have some red pantyhose. She was wearing red socks. I don't have any red socks. So I just have some pantyhose I'm going to throw on. And that's the whole costume. Pretty awesome. And it will be a comfortable one to wear. Let's get started on our makeup. Rosie the Riveter. Now, Rosie the Riveter is a really simple makeup. It's actually a makeup that I use pretty much every day. So a little bit of a winged eye, mascara. I'm probably gonna do eyelashes. We wanna look feminine. We wanna look very feminine for this. So eyelashes, red lipstick, all of that. I'm going to do a bit of contouring just to try and look more like the poster. So, I'm going to be doing that with some kind of terracotta color just to make myself look more like I'm in a poster. I don't know. I, I think I've tried it before. I have done this costume before. And when I did it before, the first time, I actually made the We Can Do It background. I just took a piece of cardboard and I painted it and it looked awesome. If you're wanting to drive this costume or take it to the next level, drive it home, take it to the next level, you may want to do that. Uh, paint the background and attach it to you somehow by Velcro or even tie it on to yourself by making holes in your costume and holes in the board and tying it onto the board. Any way you want to do it, but it does look really cute with the board and it really, it's the cherry on top. <laughs> but since I already did that the first time I did this and I have so much else to do, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to add on a background, but you can take it or leave it. You can do it or not. Either way, this is going to be a very recognizable 
costume that everybody knows and loves. So I already put my foundation on and I did my eyebrows because it's all something you've seen me do a million times. If you haven't, and this is your first time watching, you can pretty much see me doing that in every one of my videos. <laughs> Everything that has a kind of normal makeup to it. So since I've already done that, I'm going to start with my winged liner. And there's no method to my madness when I do this. I just do it until it looks good. <laughs> I get stopped all the time by people telling me I look like Rosie the Riveter just because of the way I wear my hair. I'm always wearing my hair up like this and then I put a bandana around it and people tell me this all the time. Same with Betty Boop when I wear my Betty Boop wig. It just wasn't my intention to look like Rosie the Riveter. It's just something that happened because I wear a vintage look with my makeup anyway, the red lipstick and the winged liner and that's how I wear my makeup. So when you add sort of a vintage style of hair and a bandana around it, you're instantly Rosie the Riveter. And people love it, but it actually just started being commonplace for me to wear my hair like that because I work, I've always worked, well most of my life I've worked in a kitchen and I needed to have my hair back. So I don't really wear hats. I'm not a hat wearer. So I came up with this look and I started buying, you know, I had a bandana. I think the, the first one I had was just a red one. And I go thrifting a lot, so I bought, I kept buying bandanas here and there. And it just kind of became a regular style for me. Even if I'm not going to work, if I don't have time to do my hair, I'll just throw it up in a bandana. And it looks like I spent time trying to do my hair, you know, even though I didn't. One down, one to go. So Rosie, there was kind of a controversy behind who was Rosie the Riveter. And it sounds like for a while, they weren't quite sure who the real Rosie the Riveter was. They thought at one point it was a woman named Geraldine Hoff Doyle who worked in the Navy machine shop during World War II. And then they thought it could be Rose Will Monroe who actually worked as a Riveter at the Willow Run Bomber Plant near Detroit area. And then they thought, well, maybe it's this Rosalind P. Walter, who also was a riveter in New York. It wasn't until later that they found a picture and it was an actual live image of a woman who had been photographed and her name was Naomi Parker Fraley. A photograph was taken of this woman in 1942 while she was working at a machine shop in Alameda, California. And in the photo, she dons a red polka dotted bandana. Naomi Parker Fraley actually recently passed away in January of 2018, but she was 96 years old. And here is her image. I think this could be the one. I think she, even in her 90s, resembles Rosie the Riveter, the poster Rosie the Riveter. All right, I'm gonna do my other one off camera and then I'll be back to finish up this look with you. <laughs> I just went and did my winged liner and put on some mascara. I will be putting on some lashes as well. Like I said, I wanted her to be a little more dramatic because this whole propaganda poster was about women in the workforce. So you want to be very feminine because she's wearing like a, like I said, like a denim work. I don't think they, I think they used to make like mechanics uniforms in denim because it's a strong fabric. And I don't think they do that anymore, but I think that's what she's wearing. We're getting there. I just went and put my eyelashes on. I usually always do that off camera because <laughs> eyelash face is real. The struggle is real, <laughs> you know? So I'm gonna put my red lipstick on and then I'm gonna go through and do a little bit of sort of a contouring. I don't know if you can really call it that, but. I saw some of the cutest like mother daughter ideas online for this. Uh, a mother and daughter dressed up as Rosie the Riveter. Um, so cute for like a mother-daughter idea. Another cool thing you could do 
is like a whole World War II propaganda slash sign of the time sort of group costume if you were going as a group. Now the AAGBL, All-American Girls Baseball League, was happening around the same time. So let's say you and a bunch of girlfriends went out. Somebody could be Rosie the Riveter. You could go as the, you know, the, um, what they call them? The Georgia Peaches, I think, in a league of their own. You can go as the ball team. Um, there was a really cool Uncle Sam poster at that time. If you wanted to go with your boyfriend, husband, whatever, and you could be Rosie the Riveter and he could be Uncle Sam, like the Uncle Sam wants you poster. You, you've seen it. It's Uncle Sam pointing. Uncle Sam wants you to join the U.S. Army, I think it was. So it's really cool. So you and your husband can go as that and maybe friends of yours can be the famous Time Magazine. Is it Time or Life Magazine? With the nurse and the sailor that are kissing, they have a whole big monument about it. I think in California. I'd love to see that in person, but yeah, like if you go in with um, a couple, you can do couples costumes like that. There's so many cool ideas that you can do with history. There's always a lot of ideas. So I just wanted to throw those out at you because you may be looking for a group costume. It may not just be you, maybe you and your boyfriend, you and a group of friends, whoever. Just look at things from that time period and all of you can go as something different. So I'm going in with this sort of terracotta color. She had a bit of a cleft chin. I'm gonna blend this once I have it done. And I'm just gonna do that. In the eye area, add some. See what I'm saying? It kinda, <laughs> I don't know. I see things like I see them. I will, but I will blend this in. And we'll just kinda see how it looks afterwards. I'm kinda using my finger to blend. One thing I don't want, I don't want it to just look like a line. <laughs> so we'll do a little of this. So this is just kind of like a brown I'm adding underneath. Contouring is magic. I don't know. It's so crazy. It's not something I often do, but it's I definitely can see the magic in it. I can't see my cheekbones at all. So I'm gonna highlight with some of this sort of terracotta also. All right, now I have some white. This is coming from my Kat Von D. This is kind of like a, um, a whole contour palette of creams. And I'm just going to do some white on my tip of my nose and here on the bridge of my nose. I'm going to, I think, go into my eye a little bit too, like right here. It's just kind of casting a shadow on the eye, making it look more like it's a generated image <laughs> rather than reality. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, we were pretty much done. I'm gonna shine up my lips here with the gloss that came with the lipstick. Let's go get dressed. All dressed up and ready for photos. We can do it. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you loved today's episode. I was spitting a bunch of great ideas. I mean, a World War II group costume would be so amazing with the sailor, the nurse, and then Rosie the Riveter and Uncle Sam. 
I think that would be really, really cute for a group to do. Or even bigger group, you can like... Oh my gosh. Bone Jangles just passed out on me. He's been drinking too much lately. Anyway, for a big group, you can just look into World War II. See all the different characters you can go as. Or look at the propaganda posters and you can come up with a bunch of ideas. But that does it for today's episode. If you haven't already, please remember to like, subscribe, and share the video as it does help the channel out. And I'll see you next time.